He heard it, the silence of those whose feet he thought he saw, by virtue of blocked light under the door, and he knew he had to stay up and concentrate, concentrate on the love he felt for her, asleep and unknowing on her pillow, on the last train to Clarksville, with her eyelashes unthreatened by the uncommon stops in between the sparsely settled American farmland that separated every here from every there and gave him solace in its unsettledness, in its everywhere. Am I not awake? The hill land especially gave him solace and the land that could never be tamed by man. The land uninhabited even by those whose feet he thought he saw as blocked light under the door. Those who frightened him and made his palm sweat where it lay on her forehead and dried in strands of her long hair. Those who made him turn his head and try to hear above the rush of the fan, the silence that could never be heard, but only felt on the surface of his skin that penetrated the egg of the eye and made him blind. The silence that made him move and then stay awfully still. He did not know who they were, these spirits, these hallucinations. This is paranoia. This is paranoia, he repeated to his beating heart. But he was not certain he was awake. Times before he had been certain, only to awaken again. But he was with Bella, the girl he loved. There had to be a goodness that shielded him and kept them from opening the door and touching him and arousing in him such sensitivity as to crush not only the relations he had and isolate him, but also make the senses detect the world unbearably, like a form of autism, imparting gifts he found painful to use, the ache in his ears and eyes in the head. But so far, tonight, he had them at bay. He would OD on water before dying in his sleep. He resolved to discard the cursed paranoia, scrape wire hangers until he found a nightgown of hers, and then strip down to his underwear, and he threw it over his shoulders. It hung nicely down his thin frame. He had thinner, more attractive ankles and longer eyelashes than her. He climbed back in bed, molded his body against hers and kissed her on the neck and face. And she woke and saw him in her clothes and blinked her eyelids a number of times to get the sleepers out of them. Maybe you ought to find something that suits you, Will. This doesn't? He asked innocently and a bit dejectedly. He acted, well, am I going to have to leave Townsville then? You are a little monster, a little terror. She wasn't shocked. He had pulled this before. A curiosity, this will. Fit for a freak show. Or a sideshow, to be sensitive. She giggled and got up and scraped hangers for a simple dress that matched his eyes. He lay still on the bed, sweating still from the fear, the spirits backing away. This will do nicely, she said. He raised his long lashes and saw the beautiful dress and let her pull it over his raised arms and shut his eyes as it fell softly over his shoulders. Murder lost his trail to this, and he had her to thank for this. And together they climbed into bed and together lay and slept and she stroked his long hair till her lids were weighed down. My work here is done. Townsville is safe again, she whispered. 